I'm very happy to tell you what I'm about to tell you next. Cricket is making a big stride towards gender parity. The ICC has announced a major decision. The ICC is the International Cricket Council. They will now give the same prize money to men and women at global events. Basically, all your World Cups. Let me explain how that will work. Suppose India wins the men's T20 World Cup. They get $1 million in prize money. Now, suppose Australia wins the women's T20 World Cup. They too will get $1 million. So, no more disparity. And in case you're wondering, yes, until now, that was not the case. Let's look at T20 World Cups to see the difference. Last year, England won the men's tournament. How much did they get? $1.8 million for the men's tournament. This year, the women's T20 World Cup was held. Australia won it. They got just $1 million, which is 44% less than what the men got. Same format, same number of overs, same organizers, just the prize money was different. The ICC says it wants to completely eliminate pay parity by 2030, meaning not just at global events, but at all events. You see, most cricket happens bilaterally. Maybe India goes to Australia or South Africa goes to Bangladesh. The ICC does not decide the prize money for these tournaments. That depends on each cricket board, which is why this latest decision does not mean mission accomplished. There is still a long way to go. Last year, the BCCI announced pay parity for its players. Both men and women now make the same, same kind of money. What about other cricket boards? New Zealand was actually the first one to do it. They announced pay parity in July 2022. Australia has also set ambitious targets, but no pay parity yet. And this is a story across sports. We have some numbers for you. The average male golfer earns around $1.25 million. And female golfers, just $48,000. Now basketball. Since NBA is the pinnacle of basketball, let's look at their numbers. The male players make $5.3 million per season. The highest paid, the highest paid female player got just $220,000. And let's not even talk about the average. In baseball, the gap is even worse. Male players get around $4 million and female players just $6,000. Let me repeat that for you. $4 million versus $6,000. And finally, tennis. People say tennis has done better on gender parity. To some extent, yes. The Grand Slams offer the same prize money to winners. But that's just four tournaments. Elsewhere, pay parity is growing. Consider this year's Italian Open. The men's tournament had a total prize money of $8.5 million. The women had just $3.9 million. Overall, women tennis players make around 80% of what men make. How is this acceptable? It's the same sport, the same set of rules and stadiums, but the prize money is vastly different. And I'm not saying things have not improved in the last decades, but it's like a drop in the ocean. We are not going as fast as we should. And one reason for that is all this, the nonsensical opposition. You've probably heard some of this. The men's events generate more money, so they should be paid more. Here's another one. No one watches women's sports, so where will the money come from? Well, I have a couple of questions for these people. Question number one, how much has the world invested in men's sports? And how much has it invested in women's sports? I'm talking about both time and money. The men's IPL started in the year 2008. And the women's IPL, 2023, almost 14 years later. So naturally, the men's tournament will generate more money, not because it's more entertaining, not because women's IPL is boring, but because the men had a massive head start. People ignore this when they talk about revenue disparity. Men's events earn more because you've invested in them. Millions of dollars and decades of time. Do the same with women and you'll see the results. Now question number two. How many social and cultural constraints do ma male athletes face? Nowadays, none. Maybe your family will frown at first. But that's about it. Not the case with many women across the world. They have to battle their families, their societies, and their religions to do what they love. Just look at Afghanistan. The Taliban have banned all female sports. The cricket team has been disbanded. The football team is living in other countries. My point is this. Men's sports have had a relatively easy trajectory. The women had a harder time. More hoops, more challenges, and more frowns. I know we can't change the past. But we need to understand that past to make a better future.
It wasn't sporting quality that created this revenue and pay disparity. It was discrimination. It was because the world put more money and more effort into men's sports.